Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this Let's Play we are going to tackle Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, a brilliant From Software title that I think people thought, and I did as well, that it was going to be a feudal Japan interpretation of Souls, but it's really not. I've been informed that it's really more like the Tenchu games. I haven't played the Tenchu games myself, but it makes sense from soft release Tenchu games, not since the beginning, but in the PS2 era, they have experience with them. What stands out, though, is this game's combat system. There is a lot more of a focus on stealth than there was in Souls, but the combat has a whole new mechanic. Kind of. The Souls games had poise. If you broke poise, you could do a critical blow, like a parry or post kind of thing, except just by hitting the enemy's shield enough. But in this game, it allows you to deal a death blow. So there are two ways to deal death blows. Break poise, or reduce HP to nothing. You're probably going to end up breaking poise more often. Some enemies just don't like having their HP reduced, or they have too much of it. You might want to reduce HP to reduce the regenerative abilities of the poise bar, though, so there's a little bit of juggling you might have to do, and this game becomes very, very fun once you get into the groove. If you think you're going to play this like a Souls game, you might find this game to be frustrating, but once you do what it wants you to do, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities, especially with all the other little tricks you have in addition to your katana. So, we are going to do what we can to save our lord from the bad guys and we are going to platinum this game, and it is going to be super engaging in its combat as we do. So, without further ado, let's go crazy. Well, here we are. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Activision? But wait. FromSoft, that's more like it. Oh, title screen, we just go right into it. Okay. Care. Okay, let us do language. Normally I actually would play this in Japanese, but for the sake of accessibility, I will change it to English. And now let us do a new game. In the closing years of the Sengoku era, Japan was consumed by perpetual conflict. The fires of war raged on, spreading deep into the mountains, to the land of Ashima. Gorgeous scenery, though. Oh, brutal. Oh, brutal. He just takes it? Damn. Wow. Jeez, that's sharp. 
What's the matter, Stray? Nothing left to lose? Well, would you look at that? Fascinating. Will you join me, Starving Wolf? On that day, a young cub was taken from the battlefield. He trained relentlessly, and indeed, went on to become a master shinobi. Listen, Wolf. You must never forget the shinobi code. As your father, my word is absolute. Your master's is a close second. As of today, he is your master. Defend him with your life. If he is taken, bring him back at any cost. You understand me, don't you, Wolf? Ooh, cool loading thing. Some twenty years. After Ishin's coup, the Ashina clan was on the brink of collapse. And the shinobi, known as Wolf, had lost everything. Both the man who took him in and the boy he had sworn to protect. Shinobi, open your eyes for the sake of your master. I guess that's us. Okay, we are playing. We have very little health. Now allow me to show you some unbelievable aspects about this game. You ready for this? You ready for this? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we can jump. Even though this game isn't a full-on Souls-like, from what I've heard it's more of a Tenchu-like, I still haven't been able to jump in a game like this since Hellpoint, which I did not let's play. Also, water does not immediately kill me. Incredible. Incredible. Also, here's another shocking thing. Get ready for this. This game does not use summons or anything like that. This is strictly solo. I can pause the game. I know. So quick items. You can change your equipped quick items. There are five slots available. Okay. Here they are. Inventory. Items in my possession can be viewed in them. Surprise. Change categories this way. I have a homeward idol. So a homeward bone. A small, palm-sized wooden Buddha can be used repeatedly, held by the wolf ever since he was saved by his father. Its corners are rounded with use. This Buddha is used to return home. It will return the user to the last visited sculptor's idol of the dilapidated temple. Well, you can see on the bottom of the screen, to next skill point, 500, but that implies that there's XP I can gain, but this description does not say anything about losing everything when you use it, like you would with the dark sign. I don't know options, its controls, and all that good stuff. Alright. Another thing to get used to, at least with the default controls, I pressed X not to pick stuff up, but to jump. I press square to pick stuff up. Ornamental letter. A letter thrown into a well. 
Kuro's Wolf. Uh, I believe Kuro means black. Your destiny awaits you at the Moonview Tower. Escape from the well and find the tower bathed in moonlight. Even without a blade, you can reach it. Stay silent. Stay vigilant. Alright, well, I have a mission. So. I'm pretty fast. X jump, so I did it. Wall jump. Oh, that's cool. Ashina Reservoir. I'm quite a bit more mobile than I was in previous... I, I'm going to keep calling it a Souls-like even though it's not perfectly accurate. I'm a lot more mobile than in previous Souls-likes. Can you believe it? Uh, into the Death Cliff. Classic FromSoft trope. Start the game. Whoops, you can die immediately. All the way back to uh, US Kingsfield. Wall Hug. Oh ho. Would you look at that? Make a peek. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Stop hugging. Stealth. Advance without being seen by crouching in bushes or moving under floors. You don't have a sword at the moment. Use stealth to avoid enemies and head to the moon view tower. If you're about to be seen, warning markers appear above enemies' heads. Okay, sounds fair enough to me. That shinobi at the bottom of the well. We didn't shackle him, restrain him, nothing. That doesn't worry anybody? Not at all. Not only is he unarmed, he has completely lost his will to live. Nothing but a coward. Unworthy of our concern. Oh, well, they picked a bad time to say that. Anyway. Yeah, they don't see me. Feels a little like Ghost of Tsushima, even though this game came out before that. Under floor movement, I can slip into tight spaces such as beneath a floor when crouched. Sounds like somebody saw me, so I'm gonna just leave. Shikinori Yamauchi. I do not want to be caught. Sounds like I lost them. Ledge hang. Oh god, I can see this getting real scary. And I can drop, but I'd rather not. Climb back up. Okay, so far this is easy. Oh no. Jumping in a FromSoft game. Pretty generous jump though, I gotta say. Jump and ledge hang. Okay. Can I... I guess I can't climb up because it's a sheer cliff face. Now I can climb up. It's just a person reading. Shinobi. In accordance with the bond of Lord and Retainer, you will pledge your life in my service. As you command. S 
Kusabi Maru. I feel that I should know what Kusabi means. I know that the big scary ghost in Fatal Frame 2 was called the Kusabi. In any case, a katana given by Kuro, the divine heir. An heirloom of the Hirata family, a cadet branch descended from Ashina. Once thought lost, it has found its way back into the hands of the wolf. The name Kusabi Maru beseeches, a shinobi's role is to kill, but even a shinobi must not forget mercy. A mantra the blade itself may manifest. On top of that, I get his chat. Royal wolf, I see you are wounded. I have something that may help. It is a special gourd of medicinal waters. Use it to heal your wounds. Healing gourd, or I guess Estus flask. A gourd filled with vitality restoring medicine. Resting refills the gourd. Made by an apprentice of the extraordinary Dr. Dogen. Though it is strange that the gourd's medicinal waters refill automatically. <laughs> Whenever you die, they magically come back. The seeds within may hold the secret to how it works. My lord. Now then, were you gravely injured? A afterward? After what? Do you not remember that night? I do not. Hmm. No. We'll talk about it later. Right now, we must escape Ashina Castle. As you say. There's a secret passage beneath the moat bridge that will take us out of the castle. Lord Ishin told me about it once. I ask you to find that secret passage. Once you find it, hmm, signal me with a reed whistle. You know, like you used to long ago. I will join you as soon as I hear it. You know that thing that we're just not going to talk about. You know that's going to be some critical detail to my character. Using quick items, you could cycle through various quick items and use each according to the situation. For instance, if you're taking damage, you can use this thing. So, here's my hint. Oh, it even tells me to open the menu anyway. Let's go. Um, quick items. I will set the healing gourd. Got it. An inventory, I could always just use it from here. So, there's my healing gourd, right? And I press up on the D-pad to use it. I'll have to get used to that, too. That's not a lot of healing, considering there's no way my health bar is always going to be this small. But, now that we've gotten that little business taken care of, I no longer have the red vignette around the screen. We can... Oh. Pellet. Medicinal pellets that slowly restore vitality. What, like those gems in Dark Souls 2, I guess? A secret treatment passed down for generations in these lands. Records say it has been used in battle since times long gone and lent to the famed resilience of Ashina warriors. A pill case full of these pellets would also serve as a battle charm. Okay, that's cool. Anyway... I can't even take out my sword. I guess this is a way of preventing me from accidentally aggroing or killing NPCs. Probably just as well. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't I just go out the door? Which is locked from the inside, strangely. I guess he's not a captive, maybe he just locked himself in. Posture and death blows. Here's the bread and butter of Sekiro and why thinking, oh, I'm good at souls, that means I'm good at this, is wrong. A shinobi aims to break an opponent's posture. Attacking an enemy is one way to achieve this. When an enemy's posture breaks, he's vulnerable to a shinobi death blow. Same button as attack. Target. I will crouch for stealth. Incredibly, he didn't see me. I could attack him, but this is a thing that exists. He can still backstab. This guy I'm going to have to attack. He actually hit me. Anyway. His yellow bar is the posture. I filled it, which allowed me to hit him with a death blow. That looks pretty cool. So that was taken care of easily, even though I got hit embarrassingly. I can I can block, though. The thing is, if I block and I keep getting hit while blocking, that will increase my posture bar and leave me open to a critical hit. Kind of like in Souls, actually. You can break your posture. Deflection. Sometimes Relentless Attack is not enough to break an enemy's posture. Deflecting enemy attacks is another way to damage their posture. A Master Shinobi uses a combination of deflect and attacks to achieve swift victory. L1 the moment attack lands. So there's your parry. 
Thing is though, this whole game is getting good at parrying. I have heard this game described as secretly a music game because it's all about getting that rhythm and timing your button presses. This is not Souls. This is parrying the game. Let's try it on for size. Easily telegraphed. Got him! I pressed L1 and then I quickly pressed R1. If I had left it at L1, I'm assuming he would have just been staggered. Not so bad, not so bad. Uh, there's two guys. I see a third behind the door. Maybe I could sneak around them. Lock on. Well, we already knew about this. By locking on to your target and keeping your enemy in front of you, you find it easier to attack, deflect, and perform other combat actions. Yes, but R, when locked on, changes the target. I'm not fighting everybody one-on-one. -on -one. If two guys run at me, I'm going to need to bounce back and forth, right? What was that? A little sound. I was hoping that was not somebody seeing me. Maybe not. Maybe I'm good. <laughs> There's just another guy. Great. However, it looks like I could get the drop on him. It's a fourth guy, huh? Yeah, get the hell out of here. There's that third guy. I didn't make the jump, but I can jump a lot farther than I thought. Oh, that was stupid, but it had no ill consequences. I'm trying to see through the door, not working. I guess I'll take this guy out. Oh, still noticed. Might not be so bad. Got him. Easy every time. Oh, just the one? Or did they both come? No, they both came. Alright. Now I gotta learn how to play the game. Although, actually, this guy's a scrub. This guy is Mr. Parry. Right? Oh. I got tagged, but I got the last parry in. Okay. Alright. Okay, I got them. Oh, I can break those. I wasn't 100% sure about that. What? Oh no. <laughs> the leader when I'm at no health. Uh, counter slash. Oh yeah, deflect and then counter slash. I mean, I'll try it. Easy. You can see my own posture bar increasing. Oh! Death blow against strong enemies. Some powerful opponents require m oh multiple oh the upper left of the screen he had two glowing red orbs and now he has one so I have to do it again I have to fight the same guy twice all right well like I said a rhythm game he even gave me a pellet. Enemies do respawn in this game, but I doubt that named characters are going to come back. That went about as well as that could have. I got hit more by the goons than the damn boss. Unbelievable. Anyway. 
can I? Yeah. Uh, does not open. Ugh. All right. Now, this guy's guarding something, so I'll go around. There's an item. I like the little butterflies. Fistful of ash. Ash gripped into a hardened clump. Throw it at an enemy to temporarily distract them. In Ashina, you know, the snow falls thick, and thus the hearth runs thick with ash. Okay, okay. Oh, I got two of them, it says. Okay. I guess I got a shimmy for this. You can see the scraping on the wall. I guess the implication is I can double jump it. Oh. Okay. Ah, down to eavesdrop. You know that secret passage at the bottom of the moat, under the bridge? We just got orders to guard it. Mmm. Security's getting tight. War will be upon us very soon. All right. Uh, there's somebody over there. Oh, I can't go around. Alright, let, let's do this. Let's do this. I'll be tricky. Watch this. Haha. Is this human? I can't really get a load of the head, but I'm thinking not human. I can get an insta-kill, but... It's just a targeting reticle. I can't see the head. Damn. But oh well. Ugh, and I threw him off so there's no telling. Alright. I'm actually curious of something. I want to test something because, well, oh, oof, almost fell off. I'm going to grab the items, but there's one thing I want to do. I actually want to die so that I can regain my, my not Estus, but I'll take this. More pellets. Um, I don't think there's anything else, but I'm going to go ahead and die now. This game is extremely... what the hell? This game is extremely generous with fall damage. Are you an enemy or... Wow. Death. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Oh, they started me here. That was kind of them. But yeah, as you can see, my health bar is now completely full. And I even have my not Estus. I wanted to test out this tutorial boss because FromSoft's tutorial bosses are notoriously difficult. Um, Dark Souls 1's Asylum Demon was actually the easy version, unless you want to fight him straight away without escaping. Dark Souls 2's Ogre was optional, but very difficult. Dark Souls 3's Eudix Gunder. Oh. Checkmark, but I could re -eave eavesdrop. That's great. But Dark Souls 3's uh, Eudix Gunder was quite difficult, especially if you're not familiar with Souls. He's not terrible as far as the bosses in that game are concerned, but he's scary. And of course, there's Demon Souls Vanguard, which you can beat, but shouldn't. I do know that in Sekiro, this tutorial boss... You can beat, but shouldn't. So I want to give this a shot with all of my health. It's too bad the Estus has such weak healing capability. But we work with what we have, don't we? This game is very generous with fall damage. In any case, inspect. This appears to be the escape route. Call the divine air with the reed whistle. Don't mind if I do.
Wolf, you found it. Now let us leave this place. Yes, my lord. To think that this is the only way to run from the fated bloodline is the only answer. Where shall we go once we're away from the castle? I suppose the first thing we should do is cross the Ashina border. Or perhaps we should hide somewhere. What do you think? Whatever you desire. Whatever I desire? That's the wolf I know. My lord? <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just reminiscing. Onward, then. You know there's more to our past than we think. It bugs me. But here's our exit, and there is our tutorial boss. Let us advance. Oh. It's the end of Metal Gear Solid 3. Or anywhere in Ghost of Tsushima. Hey look everybody, it's the moonlight and I have a sword. What was that? Was that the kid? The kid's just out there. Was that me? Did I hit a rock? Oh! The Divine Heir. Last we stood together was your uncle's funeral. Lord Genichiro. Thank you. Leave this to me. So the noble shinobi stands in our way. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. This guy's got health. Face. Genichiro Asina. The problem is, as you can see, our posture bars heal. So if I actually want to hurt this guy, I have to really, really keep up the pressure. I don't want to need that symbol. This is hard. I don't know if I'm allowed to block that. Oh, he got me. Oh, jeez. I need that to help me block. Is that all the shinobi has to offer? The divine heir will be coming with me. Well, I'm at the tutorial area again because I plan to actually beat Genichiro. Behold, my fruits of my training. One. Nope. Didn't even matter. 
I cannot block those red character moves. They're thrust attacks. I can, however, deflect them with the proper timing. Ah! Now there are two ways of beating this guy. It's a close one. Reduce his red health bar. One, two, on the upper left. Or increase one, two, his posture bar on the upper middle. One, two, got him. What? Yeah, the, the reason I dodged that time is that his timing changes from that leap. And I'm not used to it. One is enough. Right? I deserve that. Not great on my part. That kick. One. Out. I might actually have this. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that feels great! And that's how I lose my arm anyway. So dishonorable. He'd better not say, so this is all I have to offer, because I beat him. A shinobi know the difference between honor and victory. Okay. Okay. The divine heir is coming with me. prosthetic hand. So you're awake. Looks like death is not your fate just yet. Shinobi prosthetic. The artificial arm of a shinobi passed down by the sculptor. A replica of a human arm fitted with a variety of mechanisms, apparently designed with modification in mind. While it bears a number of cuts and is stained thick with blood and oil, it has been impeccably maintained. Now here's something I'm going to have to get used to, because I play the Souls games offline so I never see these. But I can view remnants, if I so desire. 
let's take a look. It's six seconds. Yeah, you can you can view phantoms. Just looking around. Just testing it out. Okay. Anyway, let's talk to this kindly gentleman. And what is? Oh, it's just a remnant by one of the statues. All these statues like this. It looks like all the dead monumentals in Demon Souls, and there's the one living guy. Except these are tiny statues, and he's a human-sized sculptor. What do you call yourself? Your eyes. The eyes of a wolf who has failed in his duties. Or so it seems to me. That is not your concern. <laughs> Spoken like a true shinobi, I must carve the Buddha. You do what you will. How did I get here? Why am I here? All I did was drag you here. Didn't even know if I was dragging a corpse. Couldn't let you get eaten by a pack of wild dogs. How long was I asleep? <laughs> Some time has passed since I found you. I see. However, your master yet lives. Oh, yeah? He's being held prisoner in Ashina Castle. They will soon make use of his bloodline. Looking at you, I'm sure you appreciate the value it has. Uh, left arm? My left arm. What did you do to me? That is what I call the Shinobi prosthetic. A fitting fang for a one-armed wolf. Useless when it comes to carving Buddha, though. You can have it. Shinobi prosthetic. It is no mere replacement for your lost arm. Come to me if you find any shinobi tools. Shinobi tools? I see. But this device... You catch on quick. If you bring me shinobi tools, I'll find a way to fit them to the shinobi prosthetic. Then you'll come to appreciate its worth. Okay, upgrade man. Oh, I've said too much. Go now. Uh, Divine Heir's blood, he mentioned that a second ago. What did you mean when you said they'll make use of his bloodline? I don't know much about him, except the dragon's heritage. There's a special kind of blood by that name, and that blood runs through your master's veins. So the Divine Heir... Someone's after him. Might be that the strange things happening to your body have something to do with that. I guess we're good. Oh, wow, and it took me this long because I was focusing on the conversation. Look at the lower right. It looks like I have room for currency. You're quite the strange one. Yet other peculiar visitors have come to this temple. There's one in the clearing to the right of the gate leading off the temple grounds. Two strangers in strange circumstances. You two might get along. Yeah, apparently there's room for currency, and we saw skill points earlier, so just like Demons, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne, I can't level up until I get through the prologue. Glowy remnants up there, but I don't really care. But this is interesting. You see the kind-faced Buddha there? That isn't one of mine. It was carved by the true sculptor. When a man must confront what is inside of him, it can probably be of help. Confront what is inside him? Anger, sadness, or perhaps old memories of times long gone. That kind of thing. Okay. And now we can leave here, and I see a conspicuous glowing blue thing. But for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We completed the prologue. We lost our arm and our master. But the master's still alive, and we have a prosthetic arm, at least. And we even beat the tutorial. It took me a lot of tries, but it feels really good to have emerged victorious. We still lost our arm, but in our heart, I know we won. Now to really start the game. Until next time, everyone.